Alright, tell me. Ready? I'm going to now. Just go. Why would somebody want to get into this, Mike? Yeah, I get asked that a lot. Some people come up to me and are like, Dude, why do you want to go learn how to play in the woods? There's hardly any woods. Leave the woods alone. They're disappearing. And if it weren't so important, I might I might had some weight to that argument. I might agree to some of those pieces. Yeah, leave the woods alone. Except when you leave the woods alone, they start to wither and get imbalanced due to neglect. Because we evolved alongside of them. And then we forgot that fact. And then we didn't want to admit it. And now we're trying to save the planet when in fact it is us, the highly specialized apex species, that's the most endangered. And we did it to ourselves. We're the hairless monkeys who outsmarted ourselves. And... This generation coming up sees where we've overextended. They, they don't understand it because they're not connected to the earth. They don't know how it works. They don't even know about the systems because they don't live in them. They're in boxes. This dial instead of this fire helps to control the heat. And arguably there's some efficiencies that you cannot deny. They're not being applied wisely or within the context of a culture that wants to leave it better than they found it. So why do this stuff? Why go into the few remaining natural places? Aren't you gonna stress them out? What about no impact camping? Okay, what about no impact camping? No impact camping is a lie for the masses. We have impact every day. We kill in order to live every day. The hypocrite standing from the platform of their leather Birkenstocks decrying the evils of eating meat drove there in a Volvo. Lives in a house that burns more energy in those voluminous rooms than a simple debris hut, than one of the most efficient designs manifest by any hunter-gatherer nomadic society in the world, including all of our ancestors. Because in nature, it's calories that are the currency. You don't pay someone to do the dirty work so you can have a hamburger. No. You sit around something like this and you listen to the elders so you learn how they did it. And then the stories of the hunters to see what went right as well as what went wrong. And a wide-eyed wonder, you as a kid adopted masters of their craft. From bow making, to tracking, to herbalism, to stalking through the waters without a ripple and catching fish with your hands, to pottery. The landscape was an extension of you. You were proud of the health of your landscape. And you know what? If you screwed it up, you'd have to choose between that little baby and grandma. Because one of them isn't going to see it through winter. The learning curve was a visceral, the diet was better, and you know what? Our craniums were larger. Indicates that we were smarter 2,000 years ago. Primitive does not mean stupid, it means first. And if you buy into the law of diminishing returns in engineering, you can see where the vigor and the health of the generations is diminishing. And maybe that's what's going on on this landscape. The youngers are feeling threatened. They know that there's something less than. The olders are in a state of bewilderment because there's this fraction that's happening in the, in the medicine wheel. There's no cool kids to look up to for the wide-eyed little ones. And the cool kids don't see any wandering sages to emulate. And when you get to middle age, you don't feel like there's a community to help share in things. Everything is compartmentalized and we're in a sustained state of flight, fight, or freeze. You're only supposed to be in that state less than 20% of your day. It's not supposed to be the baseline. But here we are, strapping little predators to our wrists or getting sucked into the one that tells us where to go. You're only lost when you have a place to be and a time to get there. If your skills are on point, you're reading the landscape with 80% success and the 20% failure manifests in cold or hunger or embarrassing mistakes that make you have to get up, bow, and laugh hard at yourself before finding those lessons and continuing to make your life better and the lives of everything that you're involved in better as well. It's called developing mutually beneficial relationships. In ecology, it's called a symbiotic relationship. On the earth, it's the baseline. The wolves are sharp because the deer and the moose they hunt get sharp. And those that are called or starved are the ones who aren't going to procreate. And so the organism gets sharper and smarter. And it's based on energy transferring through systems. So that's why we do these skills. 
You get in touch with that ancestral knowledge. You enter the landscape as a caretaker or a gardener where you're honing your craft beyond survival. Survival is the first baby step. You're suffering on your own native planet because why? You're an alien? No, because we forgot. And that memory, that genetic memory is still in there. But the elders who hold these skills, there's not many left. So if you want to step on this path just to see what it's about, if you want to sit down next to our campfire and share the stories of your day as you honed crafts that you enjoyed, then maybe you should consider doing this stuff too. If you have any questions, write me at staff at primitiveskills.com. Check out the website, primitiveskills.com.